If you are appearing for a design round for a big data position, then you should definitely know Lambda Architecture. And if your interviewer doesn't even know about Lambda Architecture, then please don't join that company. So Lambda Architecture is a basic concept which is discussed in design rounds of a big data interview. So there are usually two architectures which are very famous in big data world. First one is Lambda Architecture. Second one is Kappa Architecture. In this video, we will discuss about Lambda Architecture. To start with, let us discuss how does a regular big data project look like. When I say regular, I mean to say a data pipeline which is used to handle the batch process. There will be a lot of data sources and we'll have an ingestion pipeline which will ingest data from different sources into a cluster. In cluster, we'll have different processes which will process raw data which will create a lot of intermediate data also and then it will create prepared data which can be consumed by different users. Users can be some other apps or it can be different visualization tools like Tableau or ClickView. Now, since we know this basic pipeline, let us divide it into different layers. First layer is input layer. The section shown in the orange is input layer. Here we are taking data from different sources and ingesting it into the cluster. The green section is batch layer. Here the data which is sitting in cluster is processed by different different batches and we prepare data so that it can be consumed by others. The prepared data is stored in serving layer. These are the tables or the views which are consumed by outside world or different applications. Outside world or visualization applications we are calling output layer. Awesome. So now since we know all the layers in our pipeline, let us see where Lambda architecture fits. So this is a basic pipeline and need of Lambda architecture arises when you want to consume data from different streams. Now there are multiple versions of Lambda architecture. We'll discuss two versions of Lambda architecture. In the first version, our input layer is also getting data from different events. This data is coming in streams. So events could be the sales happening in a store. Every sale is an event which your system is getting right in your cluster. Or it could be uh, for IoT devices, there could be different uh, parameters that they will be getting from uh, say your variables, your watch. Uh, when you are running, it is recording that information and sending it to cloud to your uh, data lake which is consuming all the data. To handle this incoming events, you will need a speed layer. In the first version of Lambda architecture, speed layer will consume this data and process it and make it available for the output layer. Libraries like Spark Streaming, Kafka Streams, Flink to process the data. In batch layer, you are using plain Apache Spark to process the data. Speed layer will be directly serving this data to output layer. And in output layer, different tools like Tableau, ClickView, Chart.io will consume this data and show visualizations to the end user. In serving layer, tools like Presto and Impala will be used to serve the data to output layer. This is Lambda architecture version one. Let us talk about the Lambda architecture version two. In version two, responsibility of the speed layer changes. Speed layer's main responsibility will be to consume the incoming event and process the data. And this process data will be saved in serving layer. Serving layer takes the ownership of giving data to output layer. This is the implementation of Lambda architecture and it's a version two implementation of Lambda architecture where serving layer is taking care of giving data to output layer from both batch layer and speed layer. It is combining the data and giving it to output layer. Now let us talk about some of the use cases of Lambda architecture. Lambda architecture is used in recommendation engines. So the basic recommendations on a website will come from a historical data where bad jobs will take care of creating those recommendations. But as your user uses your website, he will be clicking on a lot of things. He will be doing a lot of activities on your website. So as an owner of that website, you would like to know that what activities he is doing so that you can show them the most relevant recommendation. That's where the speed layer will come in. All the activities that user is doing, all the clicks that user is doing on your website, you will use them and pass it through the speed layer and give them the most accurate recommendations. Fraud detection system, basic fraud detection system, similar to recommendation engine, will be built on lot of historical data, lot of historical attributes of the user and how fraud user will act actually end up behaving in the system. But as a fraudulent user start to use your system, based on the activities that user is performing, you would like to detect, okay, these activities are not normal. These activities seems suspicious. So based on that real time events, your speed layer will process the data, combine it with the batch layers uh, historical model output and give the 
latest possible, most accurate output to your system. IoT systems. So a lot of IoT systems will combine historical data and the latest information which is coming from the IoT device to give you the visualizations that how uh, that system is being used currently. Real-time log analytics system will use what you do historically and what are you currently doing and they will probably overlay that how your current behavior is different from the past behavior and will show you a lot of analytics on the dashboard that you are very different from the historical users or you are very similar to the historical users and all. So real-time log analytics also uses this kind of architecture that which combines speed layer and batch layer output and shows a combined view to the users. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, please type it in the comment section. I'll be very happy to answer. Please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you.